good day. I'm Cody Ann Barrett and welcome to Frontline Business. Opposition spokesman on tourism, Dr. Wickham McNeil, is blaming the implementation of the state of public emergency in St. James in January for the declines in stopover arrivals. Kimberly Wright tells us more. Dr. Wickham McNeil pointed out that the final figures for stopover arrivals for January and February are now available. They show arrivals grew in January by 4.7% and 3.7% in February. Dr. McNeil says those growth rates are a significant decline compared to the second half of 2017. And he says they do not represent the bumper winter season growth rates promised by Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett. We have anticipated to have growth of over 10% going all the way back to the end of May this year. If you look even in the estimates of expenditure, that was what was anticipated by the government when that was printed, that we would be getting growth rates of 10% going forward. This growth rate has been cut sharply. So while we still have more visitors than last year, it is not what we anticipated. The opposition spokesman says while he concedes that something had to be done about the crime wave in Montego Bay, the tangible fallout being experienced now was not necessary has been out there among the sector that the way in which they were informed, not just the stakeholders locally but overseas, was in a ablated manner that we need to, during this period, be having some more familiarization trips, getting our partners down here, showing them what the reality is on the ground, and try to mitigate whatever fallout might happen. Kimberly Wright, Frontline Business. Caribbean Airlines has reported an improvement in its financial performance. It says, among other things, it has reduced operating costs. Corporate communication head Dion Legore says this was realized in the 2016-2017 period. Caribbean Airlines at this time, we are working consistently to ensure that we manage our costs. I'm happy to share that between 2016 and 2017, there was about 40 plus percent reduction in terms of costs. That is no small undertaking. It has required tremendous focus on the part of the leadership, the management team. For the first two months of 2018, our results have been very favorable in terms of the numbers. Market leader Rubis is dissatisfied with its current 31% share of the local petroleum distribution trade. The locally incorporated business of the big French Fuels and Lubricants Corporation, Rubis, is in expansion mode with an eye on building service stations along the country's newly developed highways. It is also hunting liquidified natural gas, LNG, and liquid petroleum gas business in Jamaica and the rest of the Caribbean. CEO of Rubis Jamaica, Alain Caro, says they have a plan to further expand in Jamaica and the region. However, it is confidential. He said he could not outline the details, but noted that parent company Rubis, one of the top 60 companies listed on the Euronext in Paris, the French securities market of the pan-European stock exchange spanning France, Belgium, Netherlands and Portugal, is ready and available to expand whenever the opportunity arises. In Friday's trading session, the JSE Combined Index advanced by 581 points to close at 305,392. Overall market activity resulted from trading in 48 stocks, of which 22 advanced, 17 declined, and 9 traded firm. The Junior Market Index declined by 5 points to close at 2,952. Among the winners were AMG Packaging & Paper, Berger Paints, Cable and Wireless, Caribbean Cement, and Caribbean Flavors and Fragrances. Stocks declined for Barita Investments, CAC 2000, Carreras Limited, Dolphin Cove, and Express Catering. Stocks traded firm for 138 Student Living, 1834 Investments, Caribbean Producers, Elite Diagnostic, and Kingston Properties. JMMB Group was the volume leader with over 1 million units followed by Carreras Limited with 819,568 units and Jamaica Broilers with the 550,887 units. On the foreign exchange market, 
$125.40 is the average selling rate for the American currency. $98.10 is the going rate for the Canadian dollar while it's costing $176.37 for the pound sterling and $154.62 for the euro. News in oil. Oil prices fell more than 1% on Friday after U.S. President Donald Trump threatened new tariffs on China, reigniting fears of a trade war between the world's two largest economies that could hurt global growth. Trump said on Thursday he had ordered U.S. trade officials to consider tariffs on an extra $100 billion of imports from China, escalating tensions from Beijing. Brent crude futures fell 98 cents to $67.35 a barrel, a 1.4% loss. U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures fell $1.27 to $62.27 a barrel, a 2% loss. Both are headed for their biggest weekly fall since early February. And that's it for Frontline Business. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. Regional stories are next after the break. <music>